Uh, essentially, this is the second store that we have in Asia at this point of time, the first being Taiwan. And uh, I think one of the big questions why we've decided to come to, uh, to the Philippines first, um, as opposed to any other country, is um, it's a hotly debated topic on uh, actually my Facebook page. You know, a lot of people are asking about it. Um, a lot of people in other countries are unhappy about it. But essentially, uh, we held a poll, a voting poll, right after the, uh, the opening of our Taiwan store. And we said, you know, vote in where would you like to have the next store. And, you know, the gamers came together, the Pinoy gamers came together, and uh, we were surprised. I mean, it was like, wow, you know, a whole lot of, you could see the voting metrics go up. It was a little viral, I think, at the point of time. And here we are. So this isn't. Uh, uh, it's it's in line with uh, our philosophy of uh, following what the community tells us to do. And we're, here we are in um, Razor Store, Manila. From the times the polls closed till we decided, we didn't do any financial projections. We didn't make any financial decisions. And candidly, we just decided from the polls itself. You know, it's um, it's less of our expectations from a sales perspective because this isn't a financial decision. This isn't a rational decision. It's one of those decisions where we thought, what the hell, it's pretty cool. You know, let's, uh, let's just do that. Um, but I think more importantly, we like to give back to the community. We want this to be a great place for gamers to gather, you know, to hang out, have a great time. Um, in fact, the gamers over here aren't expected to buy anything. You know, because we've realized that we've got a huge number of fans that may not necessarily be customers at this point of time. And, and a lot of them from, from Philippines, you know, message me and say, man, you know, I, I love your products, I love your philosophy, um, but I can't afford your products right now. And we say, great, you know, come on over, still hang out. We still view all of you guys as part of the family. It's cool. So what I hope to see is that this becomes a phenomenal place for uh, gamers to hang out at. One of the things that we wanted, one of the things that we did over here at um, uh, the Razor Store was we sent our teams over here, well, Scott, Sock, and all these guys came over. They spent a lot of time in, in uh, the Philippines. Um, really interviewing uh, the team over here on the ground. And what we wanted to find were true ambassadors for gamers. And these are gamers that will run their own tournaments or run their own events and stuff like that. It's not just going to be one tournament, but we'll have small-scale events. We'll have um, our esports teams. We'll fly in our international esports teams to come over here and compete and, and show off. and. Uh, hopefully get the teams from the Philippines to fly out and to compete. I mean, I don't know if you guys are, are aware, but eSports has gotten incredible. Like just uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, there was uh, the, in, uh, the Invitational. $18 million US for the prize spot of playing Dota 2. So that's one of those things that we want to expose and get out there to the gamers over here. Well, first up, this wouldn't have been possible without our distributors, um, AGT, which has done an incredible job, I think, Philosophically, now the, the thing for us is we've always been very careful about picking partners, um, mainly because most regular partners would be driven crazy by our design requirements because we keep changing things over and over, we want to get it perfect. Um, and then we've been able to be, we've been very fortunate to get a great partner to kind of do this hand in hand together with us and uh, make it happen. And uh, over here, we're constantly still pushing the limits to try to do certain things from a design perspective. Um, you can even smell the scent. That's a special scent that we design ourselves for all razor for all razor stores. You can only smell it at uh, a razor store. I wish I could go through a video, but you know that's how it is. I mean, we spent an incredible amount of time. I mean, the amount of scents that we went through that was nuts. All right, so we, we intentionally perfumed it for ourselves. This is actually the full suite of apparel that we're going to have uh, launched right here, whether it's jackets, hoodies, etc. So I think that's been one of the biggest um, requests. More so than that, tomorrow we're actually giving out um, apparel um, to our gamers and we'll consistently have uh, activities and stuff like that that will happen over here. So uh, we're going to have new products that may not necessarily be available for sale even. Uh, a good example is like the Forge TV, which is only in the US right now. But we have brought it over here to be showcased. Is there a reason why we haven't launched it here? Yes, because we're also trying to get localized content and, and information. But over here, all the Razer fans can come experience the products um, at any point of time. I think your fans here are crazy, passionate, which is very cool. Crazy in a good way, I suppose. Um, and I hope to meet some of them uh, afterwards in the line. Um, passion, you know, that's that's very, very cool. You know, and, and I think that's one of the, the things that um, we, we really appreciate. And that's one of the reasons why we're here today, because of the passion of the fans and to, to come over here. Um, that much said, I, I will be candid, I'm not so familiar with the game development scene over here, but 
one of the things that um, I've realized is that virtual reality hasn't really you know, been brought over here in the Philippines. And one of the things that we want to do, because we are the founding members of um, OSVR, Open Source Virtual Reality, we've got over 150 you know, partners, we've got over 60 colleges and universities um, contributing to OSVR. I would love to get in touch with um, the leading technology universities over here, or the game development studios over here, and work with them, set up a VR lab, you know, things like that. That's the kind of stuff that we want to do. Um, and I'm hoping that somebody from the university will reach out to me and say, hey, look, you know, I want a VR lab in Manila or in the Philippines, and we will be absolutely excited to start supporting that. In fact, um, I think we will probably get OSVR over here as a, as a demo in uh, the next couple of weeks. The, the world's largest um, platform for VR today uh, is open source VR, OSVR, which we are behind, OSVR.com. We've got um, you know, companies like uh, Ubisoft, uh, you know, Gearbox, Techland, you know, doing the, the, the games behind it. It's a, it's a singular platform that works with Valve and it works with Oculus also at the same time. And it's a great development tool. So we are one of the founding members and um, we are shipping these um, hardware development kits for developers to work on and for the academia to work on also at the same time. So um, OSVR, we hope to, we just launched it in China, actually at China Joy. Um, I was there announcing it with the biggest uh, app store in China. Um, and I would love to get this announced over here and to get the hackers over here to start working on it. And I think we have always supported the indie developers and that's one of the things which I'm super excited about. That you know, one or two guys in a garage can do an incredible amount of work. And Recently, we acquired um, probably what's the world's largest Android TV publisher, Ouya, who works really closely with the indie developers. Um, we've backed them. They're going to be bringing all the games to the uh, Forge TV, but we've also opened it up to uh, Google Play. I mean, they they were the biggest, second biggest Kickstarter of all time. And so I'm really excited to have the Ouya team come aboard with Razer to work with the indie developers at the same time. So that's something that uh, hopefully I would be able to get the Ouya publishing guys to come and work with the developers over here in the Philippines and I'd love to hear more from um, the guys on the ground. When can I get a Razer phone, right? I know we're going to get a huge amount of attention. I'm not answering the question, by the way. Uh, but what I am saying is that for us, you know, every time we design a product, we make sure that we spend um, a lot of time making sure it's perfect. Um, and it's one of those things that we want to be able to give the best experience to a gamer at any point of time. Um, so Razer is about uh, technology, Razer is about design, Razer is about the community. Um, aesthetics is, you know, function is always comes first for us, the technology. Form follows that too. There's nothing wrong in winning in style. You know, that's one of the things that we, we believe in. Um, and Chroma, many people think that it just started last year, but it's actually started way before then. In 2010, we launched probably the first RGB suite of products, which is a StarCraft II product that basically when you play, it would change the color according to the, to the APM that we are playing and stuff like that. So we actually created that five years ago. And we've been evolving and working on a platform. So today you'll see RGB keyboards or whatever it is. That's not what we do. Chroma is a platform. So we've got over a million of these devices out there that game developers can then work on. So think about it when you play a game. Instead of it just being an aesthetic change. If somebody hits you, your peripherals can glow red and you can get that. So it immerses you into that, that um, platform. And it's the world's largest platform from an aesthetic perspective for gamers at this point of time. So we're super excited about it. Honestly, I spend a, a lot of time, and the team spends a lot of time. You know, I, I wish I could take credit for it, but like the guys like Scott or Sock, you know, these guys, they spend a lot of time in terms of making sure that every single product meets the Razer standards. And and I would say that because we spend so much time and I'm intimately involved, as well as my team, with each and every one of these um, designs, uh, I, would, I can't tell you which is my favorite because all of them are, are just so much a part of uh, us. Games. Oh. Hmm. Uh, I like the Civilization series. I play that a lot because on the road I don't have the contacts to, you know, uh, I don't have... Uh, uh, a lot of great internet connection in hotels and stuff like that. So I usually play that when I'm a single player on a plane or, or on the road. Um, fundamentally, I like Quake because that was one of the first games I played competitively, you know, back in the day, Quake 3 and um, stuff like that. It's a very visceral one-on-one -on -one kind of um, uh, experience. Um, and MM, I mean, I, I like Ultima 4, which is a real old school kind of game, but it's pre probably the precursor to 
the MMOs that I enjoy playing, you know, whether it's World of Warcraft and stuff like that, because it was one of those first games that, you know, um, it wasn't just for hacking and slashing all the time. So, you know, if I just list some of them, those are, those are a couple of them. The thing for us is, uh, we're not um, for PC gamers by PC gamers, nor are we for console gamers by console gamers. We are for gamers by gamers. And I'm not, I'm not shy to say that, yes, we look at uh, the mobile gamer, I mean, I play Clash of Clans, I play Boom Beach, you know, I'm actually, you know, I play quite a lot of that. Um, and I play on the Xbox, I play on the PlayStation and, and stuff like that. So, yes, we look at design anything for all gamers, and that's what's really important for us. We don't look at it like, um, uh, you know, more accessories, etc. We just look at what are the great products that we can deliver to gamers around us. And mobile gaming is definitely one of those things that we're excited about. So, as many people ask me, you know, Razer's gotten to be probably the world's largest lifestyle brand for gamers, right? At some point of time, we have to get out of our space. That's what people say, right? So, one of the most popular questions I get is, when is Razer going to go mainstream? Yes. And that's the cool part, right? And I'll say we'll never go mainstream. And we're just happy doing what we're doing, right? I mean, if, if we want to be a company 10 times the size of Razer today, we would make budget lines and stuff like that. We could do that tomorrow. But is that what we truly want in life? You know, there's more to life than money. There's more to life than, than all of that. We want to do cool stuff. But that much said, while Razer is never going to go mainstream, what we're going to do is we're going to bring mainstream to Razer. We're going to try to get as many gamers out there as possible. That's why I'm actually doing these interviews and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get more guys to say, like, I want to get into gaming, right? But it's so hard, right? It's a bunch of guys, you know, hardcore guys. It's not. It was like mobile gaming. It's a great way to get into gaming. And we see gamers everywhere. Why? Because maybe I've grown up with me telling, with people telling me gaming is a waste of time. You know, don't do that. But it's not. You know, you get great life skills from gaming. Um, most of the top entrepreneurs in the world started off from as, as gamers. You know, if you look at what's going on. So that's one of the things we want to be able to bring mainstream to Razer as opposed to Razer going mainstream. Um, things like the Nabu, for example, we get that so much tied in into the um, gaming ecosystem that you know game developers can develop on it and, and really get all kinds of stuff on that. So uh, I think we're just really focused on people who like to have fun. You know, there's, I think there's more to life than a lot of people are getting a bit more too serious. I think uh, look at what's happening online. Right? Everyone's uh, you know getting way too serious. So that's that's our philosophy of life. You know, to really appeal to anyone who enjoys having fun. It's, it's, it was a huge honor, I think, to be listed, I mean, amongst, I think, some of um, the most influential tech people out there. But I think what's more important um, for myself, it's a validation of the work that we've done for the gamers out there. That um, it's, it's a real responsibility or it's a real representation of how gaming has become so important as part of entertainment. And for us, I think it's all about the focus for gamers by gamers. Uh, you know, there's... Um, the healthcare industry buys a lot of Razer products, whether you are aware of it or not, um, for the precision that we bring. The finance industry buys a lot of, uh, like the Bob Weaver, because it allows them to, to execute trades a lot faster. The military, and I can't really talk too much about it, buys a lot of Razer products. So a lot of people keep asking me, like, why don't you just explore all these new opportunities? You can grow so much larger. We're happy to license our technology out. We're happy to share the technology, but we know what we're good at, and we know what we're not good at. And that's really the focus. So I think that's the mantra, focus um, on the gamers, uh, and that's what we do. So to be very candid, you know, we look like we are a very well planned, thought out company, but we're just a company of gamers. So when we got the polls to come in and say it was the uh, Philippines, um, I decided the best thing to do was to make Scott Jackson over there <laughs> responsible. And I said, hey, Scott, let's get a store in the Philippines, right? Chop, chop. And then uh, Scott had to get on a plane immediately and uh, come over here uh, and then check out the place and he said look you know I found a pretty good location you know let's do it and I said cool let's uh, get that going um, of course you know if I met a bunch of business guys I'd say something totally different <laughs> but um, in, in essence that was what happened right um, and it's great because what we've discovered is uh, we've moved so fast in terms of building this out in a couple of months uh, we found that there were so many fans, it wasn't just um, the gamers on the ground, but even the, some of the building management, they were fans themselves. So it really helped move things along, and it's really cool. Now, what's exclusive for uh, Filipino gamers? Um, uh, 
no, we, we're planning to have all kinds of activities over here, but exclusivity, probably not, because we like to treat all our fans as, as our own. So nothing particularly you know, exclusive for the Philippines market, but what we will do is to ensure that our new products get here a lot faster, and that's something that we plan to do. I, I think um, that's like Cebu and stuff like that. We're, we're looking at, we're looking at um, anywhere, but to be candid, uh, we will probably have to pick some other country before I get killed by uh, some of the other guys uh, out there. Um, and we will, of course, see the um, response of how the uh, Razor Store Philippines or Razor Store Manila will do. So we are going to be uh, mindful if this place gets too small, we will definitely need to think of expanding. Um, and we'll see how, how that goes. To be, to be candid, we went through this in the Taiwan store um, where the crowds got too big that the whole mall had to be kind of shut uh, uh, down and uh, we knew there were, there were lots of fans. And, uh, but then again, the difference is this. Our fans are gamers. They're all pretty cool. They're all pretty chill. You know, they're not unhappy people in general. So I think it's going to be a good time for everyone. I mean, there'll be off you know, issues here and there, but um, the key for me is that I want to have as many people to have as much fun as possible and that's what we want to do. One of our biggest market of fans, that's important to me. It's not about the numbers or, or the sales and stuff like that. It's like, uh, okay, I know we've got a lot of Filipino gamers who use our software, right? Um, they're all talking on Razer comms all the time. Uh, we plan to do like tournaments on Razer Arena, which is one of our software platforms uh, for the Filipino gamers at some point of time. In fact, I hope to hear from volunteers who want to run these uh, tournaments that we will sponsor and, and get more done. So um, it's one of our bigger markets in Asia uh, for the fan base that we have. Um, when it comes to sales, I'll be honest, I'm not too familiar with that. <laughs> yeah, I'll find out sometime. Hi, I'm Min, CEO and co-founder of Razer, and I'm here today at the Razer store Manila. And essentially, we have designed and built this entire store just for you, the gamer. Essentially, we want this to be a place that you can gather, meet other friends, you know, form your um, teams, and try to get into esports. So, come on by. You're very welcome at any point of time to the Razor Store Manila. Thank you very much.